Hey, this is Scott Joffrey Bonsai. In this video, we'll be going over the Sigma 1 to 300 millimeter f4 lens for Nikon cameras. Picked it up in 2016, used on eBay. Since then, I've been using a decent amount. So at this point, I have an opinion whether it's worth checking out these days or not. We'll get to all that in the video. I did go on an expedition recently, which I'll be putting throughout this video, as well as example photos from different photo shoots and outings in the past, which will be included and also all the details on the lens the aperture everything else which we'll get to in this video let's get started the sigma crackle paint is an ideal they use this type of paint for many years throughout their lens lineup issue i've seen some really terrible examples of this paint not holding up well however this specific lens is in good condition I haven't had any issues since I've had the lens with paint flecking off. So I think if you do treat your gear well, you won't have any issues with this specific Sigma paint. Have everything set up, action camera on the top, lines with the hood. I think I'll be using aperture priority, easy enough. If it's set to a minimum 320th of a second shutter speed, it's all hooked up. Focus actually feels really quick. does hesitate quite a bit. Of course, the big benefit of this lens is the nice large amount of glass. Get that f4 aperture throughout entire zoom range up to 300 millimeters. Pretty unique in a zoom lens, especially on the used market with a relatively cheap lens. Getting 300 f4 is nice. The zoom and focus rings on this specific lens are in good condition, so I think they will hold up well depending on your copy of the lens. It does have a focus window, of course, pretty standard in this type of lens. Helps you out in those situations when you need that information. This lens has a zoom ring in the back and the focus ring in the front. The focus ring is very large, which is nice. You have a good amount of travel to the focus ring. There is a dedicated aperture ring on this lens. You can lock it down to automatic camera control mode, which I usually have it set to, but it is nice to have that adjustment when you need it directly. There are nine aperture blades, not perfectly round, but pretty decent. You can look through the range, this specific lens, still very smooth aperture to it. No issues on mine. The tripod collar is included and removable. Pretty nice, works well, still has the paint on it in my case. 
The tripod collar gives you the option for landscape or portrait mode on a tripod, so that's very beneficial. The lens filter size is 82 millimeters. Pretty large, but still easy to find online. Not terribly expensive. Had no issues finding a filter. It's kind of like this foam here. Take a photo of that. Something interesting right there. That's a. Is a live spider kind of live? It's very odd. Just a tiny hint of color in there. See how that turns out. Here, let's see the water lines. Really nice photo. Just gonna try to capture that. See how it looks. So we got the lens and tripod, do some photos with this and maybe a little bit of video just to try it out with some type of tripod. It's not super strong, but do the job. So definitely no focus in live view. It does attempt it sometimes, but it's really odd how it does it. Zoom in. Zoom out. So I pre focus there and zoom out and zoom in. Get something out of it. Just nice. So actually, this focus ring is pretty nice for manual focus. So if you're into that, with the video, you can see this being decent. So yeah, maybe I should take some photos. Let's see it's struggling with focus. Doesn't know what to pick. That's nice. There is a leaf 
in the water. It looks pretty pristine, even though it's totally covered. So I'm going to put it in a good spot in the photo. Take my picture. Oh, nice thing. Let's put it back into video real quick. Is that when you're like this, you get all the junk in the photo. Nice telephoto. You can zoom in, get what you want. See the leaf right there? but it's pretty weak yeah there it is try that a little bit more there we go oh I like that so much the first thing that I noticed about this lens is very front heavy Probably pretty standard in this style of large telephoto lens, but just something to keep in mind with handheld photos and videos. Of course, this lens does not have any type of image stabilization. Another thing that makes it more challenging to use handheld. Minimum focus distance isn't great on this lens. Don't expect to do close-ups with it. The focus ring is large with a good amount of travel to it, so it is pretty decent as a manual focus lens. I measured about 3 8 of the circumference of the ring itself that is dedicated to focus. There isn't a lot of area to hold the lens, you have that huge focus ring which you can't put your hand on, just be careful not to adjust it when you're doing autofocus. Otherwise you can put your hand around the tripod collar area which is where I usually put my hand. Uh, that is removable so that's generally a good area to put your hand. The tripod collar is very beneficial. I do use a shoulder strap, which you'll see in some of my excursion video. That works well. Live view autofocus doesn't work on this specific lens, though it's pretty decent in manual focus, so kind of a trade-off if you want to deal with manual focus. You can use it in live view, of course. The standard face detection autofocus feels inconsistent. This is really the main issue with this lens for me, is the autofocus consistency. Here's a quick autofocus sound test. Of course, this is an old used lens, so there is some squeaking, but besides that, it's not a terribly loud lens. Let's see what we got range wise. Don't need to get in out of focus. Definitely too far away. Ah. So I'll have to walk further down to get to those ducks. This looks like I looked out because some boaters are coming. So we have the camera in continuous autofocus. Let's put it in 3D, see how that works. You can see the points jumping out, jumping around a lot. Is tracking. Do you mind if I take a photo of you guys? Do you mind if I take a photo of you? Thanks. Thanks.
So we've got some geese over there, relatively close, just sitting around. Still pretty far. It's not great photos, but uh, something at least. Here's some coming, so I'm going to switch to 3D, AFC 3D, and they're gone. It's probably one of the first photos I had taken with this lens. Quite a bit of ISO noise, but it did focus where I wanted it to focus. So this one I really like. Of course all these photos are edited, but nice amount of detail in the image. You can see some of the leaf texture. Let's keep looking. So this here, we probably didn't edit this, but can see what you can get with a lens like this, the nice telephoto at a larger aperture. So you can blur the foreground quite a bit and focus on the background. Now this photo itself, not very sharp, but you get the point. I think the focal point is in this general area. Do you see some detail? Not too bad. At 5.6 again. So a few of these I'll just post on Flickr, you can check out. That's two different apertures for those two. Here's another one, 5.6. Let's get to the people photos. Of course, it's good for nature work. Uh, in this case, the front heavy design and shaking, trying to get something quick in the frame, didn't result in a super sharp image, but it did turn out decent enough at uh, just looking at it small like this. So the thing you can do with these photos is with people, you can do the telephoto with a large aperture, get some nice blur in the background, and you really isolate the subject with the compression plus the larger aperture and all that. Only issue I have with this lens in these cases is the background point source light blur. You can see it's a football type shape to it, which I'm not a big fan of. It really depends on if you mind it or not, but those are not super appealing to me. But the photo itself I do like overall, very nice. Similar situation, you can see they're not round in shape. This one with bees, if we zoom in, see they're a decent amount of detail to them. Of course that depends on your camera as well, this is 24 megapixel. But, I like how those turned out. So here's again something you can do with a lens like this. I was very far down on the hill and shot up towards them. Now all the lighting and stuff didn't work out too well and the 
how they have their eyes closed, but besides that, the intent was there to really zoom in on them with the large aperture, and it did work out in that case at least. Not terribly sharp, it looks like it was front focused a little bit. Let's get another one. Similar, this actually looks like the focus was better, but uh, the composition and the lighting isn't as good in this case. The general idea of what you can get. So in this case, nice background blur again. That was actually only 100 millimeters, but do lots of nice portraiture with a lens like this, if you can manage the size and everything else. So here's an issue with the focus. They took quite a few images of this scene, and I just couldn't get it fo to focus on her face for whatever reason. So that's the, again that issue with the lens itself. Same situation. I mean, it could be a mixture of shaking and moving the front, and it's just not working out, but Again, that's my main issue with the lens. But then, of course, images like this seem to work out. Which I'm not really intentionally taking a good photo in that case, but it actually focused properly, which is funny. So that's about it for sample images. Get the general idea of types of images you can take with this unique lens. I do like the extra vocal length it adds in those situations. But let's keep going with the review. Even having used this lens since October 2016, I still feel challenged trying to get the best photos I can with it. It comes down to the front heavy design and the autofocus, so you really, really need to work on your technique, at least I had to, to get high quality images out of this lens. Now that's good in a way if you want to mess around, but it is pretty negative if you just want to take photos and focus on your art. So a big benefit of this lens is of course the F4 aperture throughout the entire zoom, and especially the 200 to 300 millimeter range with that large aperture gets a pretty unique perspective on things. Those longer focal lengths plus the thinner depth of field look is pretty nice. An alternative to this lens, you lose the zoom, of course, but a 300mm f4 prime is a good option. There are a ton of those out there, so that might be a better route in those cases. This lens has no potential for improved autofocus performance. I had emailed Sigma a while back and asked them if they could upgrade the electronics or add some type of firmware if I sent it in, but they said no, it's totally unsupported at this point. So what you get is what you get in this case. I do think if you looked for the newest cap you could find, there is a chance that it has improved autofocus. With the combination of the front heavy design and the inconsistent autofocus that I've personally experienced so far, I don't think I'll be keeping this lens. It is very high quality image wise in my opinion when all of the factors align. Simply put, I think it is great glass surrounded by an old focusing system. So that was a Sigma 1-300mm f4 lens for Nikon cameras. I'm Scott from Traffy Bonds. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks. Sometimes you just need to use my new focus, especially in these situations.